Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Martine and if you are new here I do videos on Vedic Astrology mainly but also with some tropical insights and I focus on both relationship and natal astrology. And if you like this video and you would like to hear more content from me, please like, subscribe, hit the notifications bell to see when I will post a new video. And also if you're interested in a personal consultation, I do consultations on a wide variety of subjects, please check out the video description, I will leave the information there. Thank you. So today's video is going to be in continu continuation with the uh, series that I started a while ago, which is about Aruda Lagna. Now, once again, if you don't know what Aruda Lagna is, where your Aruda Lagna is placed, please check out the video description. I will leave a link to a video there. It's a really short, concise, to the point video that I made a while ago with examples. It will quickly, quickly, you know, answer all your questions about Aruda Lagna. Um, so I'm going to get straight into the description for Cancer Aruda Lagna. So what does it mean if you have Cancer Aruda Lagna? This means that people will perceive you to be a really sensitive, gentle soul and you are most likely going to come across as a little bit of a homebody, somebody who's very comfort loving and definitely somebody who's not particularly, um, you know, let's say threatening or doesn't come across too strongly you might actually be seen as a comforting person somebody who's nurturing um, almost motherly in a way you could also be seen as somebody who is very attached to your family and to your country of origin and to your um, particularly the mother side of your family and uh, you could also be perceived as somebody who is very attached to your your well your culture your language and everything to do with your place of origin and also potentially somebody who's interested in history um, aside from that you can also conversely come across as quite um, dynamic as well because cancer is linked to movement and uh, it's also linked to the sea so you can come across as a person who actually can move around and change a lot also maybe moody and right this is the general impression and now the second house from your Aruda Lagna will fall in Leo which means that when you express yourself you come across as confident quite um, a person of a uh, few words so concise but you are also going to come across as confident and generally trustworthy so people will see you as people will tend to believe what you what you say unless there are malefics aspecting the second house um, but generally you come across as a really trustworthy confident speaker although you could come across as a little bit arrogant sometimes or at least boastful or prideful uh, but you could also be really creative so you can be perceived as somebody who's creative when it comes to expressing yourself in speech. The third from the Aruda Lagna will fall in Virgo, which means that you will be perceived as somebody who mostly relies on intelligence when it comes to going after what you want. You are going to, perceive, to be perceived as somebody who goes about any business being very analytical, very logical, detail-oriented, somebody who's more likely to you know plan steps ahead rather than you know being a trailblazer or somebody who's very energetic and just plows through any obstacles in their path um, also all of these placements you know the uh, first the third and the seventh and the sixth from your Aruda will make you seem generally a very make you seem like you're a generally relatively harmless person so somebody who would not necessarily hit hard into the competition or the um you know any enemies that you might have and definitely not somebody who's you know like a, an aggressive troublemaker um just a side note the fourth house will fall in Libra, which means that you will be perceived to come from a family that is cultured, that is well-educated, um, refined, artistic, 
your family of origin could be perceived as quite wealthy, quite well off, or somehow very feminine, connected to a lot of femininity, feminine features, feminine people. <laughs> Maybe the feminine side of your family somehow is more noticeable or somehow easier easily to recognize when it comes to how people see you so like maybe you are going to be known for your mother or for some female relative um you could also be seen as you know coming from a family that is um uh, artistic uh in a literary sense so well read like i said so well educated pretty much and the fifth house will fall in Scorpio, which shows that your children will be perceived to be very powerful, very cunning, ambitious, intelligent, secretive, uh, financially savvy, and um, generally not to be messed with. So you're going to be perceived to have really tough children. Um, and uh, yeah, pretty much. And also, regardless of the gender of your children, your children could be perceived to be, like, masculine somehow, or, like, tough, you know, because Scorpio is ruled by Mars. Um, yeah. And perceived to be good psychologists, or good, good, um, under, good stud students of the human nature, that kind of thing. So, even if they're not, like, involved in psychology or something. Right. And, um... The sixth house will fall in Sagittarius, which again shows that um, you will be perceived to be somebody who is not going to really hit hard into your enemies or into the competition because the sixth house shows how you are going to deal with potential enemies. And uh, also when it comes to your, you know, employees or people who are beneath you on the hierarchy of a corporation or something. Um, they're going to be perceived to be um, wise and tolerant and uh, maybe religious or people who are very um, focused on things like spirituality and uh, philosophy and higher learning and all that stuff. <clears throat> the seventh from the Aruda will fall in Capricorn, which shows that your partner is going to be perceived as somebody who is mature and a good social climber so somebody who's ambitious and status oriented they could be somebody who is maybe seen as very hard working somebody who basically is a, a self-made individual somebody who has really worked hard and has reached a, a position of um, of authority or a position of status in society and, yeah, generally your partners are going to be seen as uh, respectable. The 8th house will fall into your into Aquarius, which can show that you might actually be known for some kind of unusual circumstances surrounding your health. So, especially if there are malefics here. Um, if there are no malefics or if they're mostly benefics, you are going to be perceived as... A generally healthy person but otherwise when it comes to your health you're somehow going to be seen as um, you know somebody who has some kind of unusual or has a predisposition towards like phantom uh, ailments or things that are difficult to diagnose or things that are unusual somehow or rare basically the Oh, and another thing, when it comes to taking on loans, you might also have some trouble because you're going to be perceived as somebody who's maybe not particularly good at paying off debt. So it this could make things difficult for you when you go to the bank and you want to get a mortgage or something um, because you might be perceived as not particularly trustworthy uh, when it comes to loans. So the ninth house will fall from the Aruda Lagna will fall in Pisces, which shows that the class of people that are going to help you in this life are going to be represented by Pisces. So these are people who are very faith-based, 
people who are, they could be religious or they could be, if they are religious or not, they're going to be very spiritually oriented. So they could be people who, I don't know, even, even astrologers to a lesser extent, but more likely you're going to see people who are involved with some kind of religious organization or people who are in any business connected to the seas, the oceans, and I don't know, maritime stuff, maritime travel, um, all kinds of things. Also psychics, people who are very imaginative, people who are like intuitive and into the, let's say, somewhat esoteric aspects of life. And um, also people from faraway lands. So these are the classes of people that are most likely to support you. Um, this is helpful in case you want to start a business or something. Because, like, for instance, you could, I don't know, you could target your audience to be people from faraway lands or people who are religious or faith oriented or something and that will bring you more success than if you target a different type of audience um right the tenth house from the aruda lagna will fall in aries which shows that you're actually going to have a really good social position you're going to be seen as somebody who is a leader in your career a pioneer maybe even you're going to be seen as you know definitely very assertive and very aggressive when it comes to pursuing social status uh, or your career ambitions, not necessarily social status. Um, also, you could be perceived to have a profession that is quite risky somehow. Um, maybe it could be, this could make you somehow, I don't know, I was going to say maybe defense, but I, not necessarily because considering the first, the third, and the seventh houses not so not necessarily unless you have like malefics in the first the third or the seventh house then maybe you could go for something like the military but no generally um tenth house in aries will make you seem like somebody who's definitely you know reaching a high position in your career somebody who is of importance when it comes to social status and uh professional achievement and the 11th house from the Aruda Lagna will fall in Taurus, which shows that your um, friends are going to be perceived as people who are um, rather uncomplicated, but people who are nevertheless very supportive and very affectionate and loyal to you. And... Um, also, you could be perceived to have a lot of women friends and people who are maybe nature loving. That's another thing. And um, another thing that it shows is that you could have gains from um, inconsistent sources of income. So this is a position that will actually help you to make money from, I don't know, commissions, sales, things like that, that you know, where you don't have the same income every month. Of course, you have to look at other things in the chart to support this. But from this point of view, it's, you know, this is the kind of thing that it supports. Um, yeah, so it shows that you could make, you know, random income from all kinds of things that are unconstant, maybe project-based types of work or sales or marketing or stuff like that. And the 12th house will fall in, uh, what was it? Yeah, Gemini. So the 12th house will fall in Gemini, which shows that your losses could be coming from something connected to your younger siblings or something connected to communication. And aside from that, the basically your hidden enemies, so people who will secretly oppose you, although they won't tell you this to your face, are also going to be younger siblings, most likely, or just people who are young in general. Um, so this is a thing to consider, for instance, if you're, you want to be a professor or a teacher, um, because you might have, like, students that try to, you know, 
<laughs> I don't know, sabotage you or they try to make your life difficult because, you know, younger people are basically going to secretly be against you. Uh, and another thing that I also forgot to mention, because the seventh house, so 12th house is hidden enemies and the seventh house is people who directly oppose you. So your seventh house being in Capricorn, it also shows that the kind of people that oppose you could be people from um, that are connected to state authorities on the one hand and also just older people. So people who are older than you in general. Um, will tend to oppose you but the difference is that these people will tell you to your face that you know if they have a problem with you or they will you know they might actually attack you or you know but in any case they will tell you to your face whereas the younger people they won't tell you but they will scheme against you you know that's the difference um yeah <laughs> and uh some famous people who have a ruta lagna in cancer are may west Mae West, sorry, Bruce Willis, Hillary Clinton, and Jean Tierney. These are the ones that I could find. If you know any other famous people, please let me know in the comment section. And uh, yeah, this has been it. I hope you have found it useful. And once again, please comment in the comment section if you have any questions or anything you want to add. And uh, please like, subscribe, hit the notifications bell to see when I will post a new video. And if you are interested in a personal consultation, check out the video description. I will leave the information there. Thank you.